Hello, my name's Kate Mildenhall and I'm an author from Melbourne. I'm currently speaking to you from lockdown and I'm so excited to be answering some questions for all of you at Bookface about my new book, The Mother Fault, which comes out on September the 2nd. So question one, tell us a little bit about your new book. The Mother Fault is the story of Mim, a woman who must go searching for her husband, but ultimately who finds herself. It's set in a frighteningly near future Australia where everyone is now ruled by the department, a new authoritarian government whose strategy is of total surveillance. I did write this more than two years ago, uh, but their motto is we are all in this together, which now has an even more frightening feel to it. The novel opens as Mim finds out her husband Ben is missing from an Indonesian mine site. When she tries to find out what has happened to him, the department question her and threaten to take away her kids. She flees home to the family farm, but even there she is constantly surveilled and ultimately she's forced to make some really terrifying decisions to keep herself and her children safe. It is a thriller, it's a road novel, it's a love story, it's a sailing adventure. It's the story of a woman who will go to any length to keep the people that she loves safe. Second question. The book explores a lot of contemporary social and political issues, including surveillance, totalitarianism, mining, and the climate crisis. Was this something that you consciously set out to explore in the novel? Well, absolutely, yes. When I began writing The Mother Fold, I was furious at the constant news and commentary I was watching of our government turning away people who were coming here to seek safety. And I was watching this, as we all were, happen all around the world. So I was really interested in, in borders, in how states uh, refuse entry to people who are seeking safety. And that's where the, the ideas for the story began. As it went on, of course, I also began being interested in how governments police those borders and how they police and govern in general. And I, I went on to look at authoritarian states on how surveillance is used as a weapon against civilians uh, and all of the, uh, the problems that, that stem from those ideas too. In terms of the climate crisis, I... I read a lot, including um, Amitav Ghosh in The Great Derangement, talking about the fact that it is really our responsibility as, as writers and as artists to be addressing the, the climate crisis in our work. So I think that I couldn't have written a, a contemporary or near future book without addressing the climate crisis and the idea of mining and extraction and... Uh, geology and geological thinking was formed part of that that storyline as well um as much as i think i'm so often devastated and despairing at, at the state of the world and that is especially so now having those burning questions and furies uh in me uh as i explored them through this book was a way of of me grappling with them and I think that it's so important for all artists right now to be putting their art out into the world and to be grappling with those ideas and to be imagining possible futures uh, and, and ways out of them. Question three, how would you say this novel differs from your first novel, Skylarking, and what was it like writing a second novel? Well, it differs so much from Skylarking. My first novel, Skylarking, which came out in 2016, is a historical fiction based on the true story of, of two girls growing up on the south coast of New South Wales in a lighthouse and the terrible incident that, that befalls them. I didn't know I was writing a novel when I began writing Skylarking, so that made it far easier. Um, also, I had the, the skeleton of a plot, I suppose, because I had the beats of a true story to, to help me navigate. For The Mother Fault, I and my second novel, I knew that I wanted to push myself and to move as far away from historical fiction as I possibly could. I wanted to 
set myself a challenge, but also to let readers see what I was capable of. And so, of course, this idea of a, a near future thriller was was born. It was difficult because I think second books are and because suddenly you know that there are, are readers out there and also because many of the ideas and uh, things like grappling with the the motherhood in the story, my own experiences of motherhood, just meant that this was quite a exhausting book to write. But my gosh, I'm so thrilled that it's it's out in the world now. And in fact, strangely enough, I'm now writing my third book and I'm going back to historical fiction for that one. So who knows what comes next? There's no rhyme or reason to it. Okay, next question. Do you read other books while you're writing and were there any other books that inspired this novel? Absolutely. I read so many books all the time. I co-host a podcast called The First Time Podcast with the writer Catherine Collette and we interview writers, Australian writers, about their books and writing process. So I'm always reading books for that and I can't afford to feel like they're influencing me in any way. So I'm not someone who gets particularly worried about being influenced by books. There were some really important books I've brought along some show and tell. The first of those is The Natural Way of Things by Charlotte Wood. Now, uh, I heard Charlotte speaking a lot about grappling with the content uh, that she wanted to write about for The Natural Way of Things uh, and not being sure of the form. And because I, I really felt that resonated with me, I actually got in contact with Charlotte while I was writing The Mother Fault and asked if she would mentor me, uh, which she did. And uh, so that was a huge part of, of writing the book and such an extraordinarily life-changing mentorship. Um, I read a few different books that I loved in terms of building uh, a near future world. The Power by Naomi Alderman, uh, Storyland by Catherine McKinnon, which of course goes back in time and then forward, uh, and Clade by James Bradley, who's just such a master in this particular area. Of course, I had to do some research. I did get on a yacht uh, as part of my research for The Mother Fault, but I also did some reading. So friends lent me some wonderful books uh, about sailing. And then this extraordinary book by John McPhee, Annals of the Former World, which is all about rocks and geology and just fueled my obsession, newfound obsession with geology. Uh, that was, was part of what helped me to write The Mother Fault as well. And final question, what do I hope readers take away with them after reading The Mother Fault? Well, I hope they take hope away with them. Uh, I hope that they are entertained and exhausted after being on a kind of white knuckle ride, but I really hope that they have with them this image of uh, a woman, a strong woman and mother who is flawed and exhausted and who doesn't know if she's done a good job or not but who has ultimately gone to the very edges of, of what she thinks she's capable of uh, to keep her family safe. And uh, that's the image that I really want readers to be left with. Uh, I hope that you really enjoy The Mother Fault. Uh, you can get it from any of your Bookface stores. And I hope that one day we get to meet in one of those stores. But until then, please get in touch with me on social media or on my website. Uh, I hope that you stay really safe and well. And of course, that you keep reading. Thanks so much.